Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on today's Marketing Pride podcast. My name is Eric Clayton, and I'll be your host for today. Today, we have a very special guest, Mr. Jack Schaefer. He is the director of the athletic department, and he has agreed to generously spend his time with us today. Please tell the viewers at home a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Jack Schaefer. I'm the director of athletics at Widener University. I've been the director that I'm going into my 16th year here. Uh, prior to that, I was also the men's co soccer coach and the women's soccer coach. And I've been here for about 22 years. Wow, I do have a little bit of a cheat sheet here about you. Uh -oh. It says, yeah, in 1999, you were the men's soccer coach. So you must, be, you must have been around for a while, like you already said. <laughs> if you're trying to say that I'm kind of old, you're right. <laughs> yeah. But I also see in 1997, you were the women's soccer coach. And for both teams, you actually won Coach of the Year. I did. That was, uh, that was prior to my appointment here at Widener. I was at like Combing College. That was my first head coaching job. And the way they had that constructed was that you, the one coach coached both teams simultaneously. Spontaneously. We had one small field, mm -hmm. so it was uh, yeah, it was quite a, a quite an adventure. It was yeah, great. it must have been very stressful for you back in the day. So, you know, I would I I go back to this this idea that you if you surround yourself with good people, good things happen. And I was mm -hmm. fortunate in that uh, uh, I had a very good assistant by the name of Jim Finley, who's now the men's soccer coach at uh, Susquehanna University. Oh, okay. that, that came with me, and we were able to. Able to do some really great things with two, with two with one starting program. The women's program had just begun. We'd taken it over in its very first year, and the men's team as well. We uh, you know moved things along within about five years to where we were really you know contending for an NCAA spot, and it was uh, it was fun. It was very fun. It's very impressive. A lot done in a short amount of time. I also see here that you have created and you oversee the Blue and Gold Club at Widener. Could you tell us a little bit about that? I would love to tell you about the Blue and Gold Club. We. Uh, Blue and Gold Club is a, is a, um, a group of uh, dedicated alumni that, um, that were student athletes um, at their time here, whether they were Widener College, Widener University, or, um, or PMC. And um, we try to do some projects and do some fundraising that benefits the student athletes and, and try to en enrich the student athlete experience. Okay, what kind of projects do you guys do? R well, we've done... We will have the uh, Senior Awards Assembly coming up this year. Um, that is coming up in um, in May, early May. And uh, we also have a, uh, a golf outing that goes off in um, in, in mid June. Do you uh, play any golf yourself? I, I used to I used to slice a lot of golf balls. <laughs> I do. I, I don't don't as much anymore. I, I still slice a lot of do golf you? balls. Yeah, right, so. right. Thanks for sticking in. We're going to go check back with Marissa, who's talking to Widener students about marketing. Thanks, Eric. I'm here on Widener's main campus, surveying some students about their opinions. So, what type of marketing do you think is most effective for our generation? Um, definitely social media as opposed to either flyers or commercials, I guess, for TV, just because we're always on our phones. So, social media, whether it's Instagram stories, Snapchat, um, even TikTok, like stuff like that, is going to be more effective than um, older forms of marketing, I think, for us. Um, I feel like, like, stuff on TikTok usually like helpful. Social media. Yeah, and, like, sponsorships with influencers, probably. Yeah. I say social uh, media, because, like, it's still accessible. We're always on it, and it's always there, so fast information and, you know. Yeah. Social media, definitely. Probably social media. Instagram. I would say social media because for me, I personally don't really look at anything else other than like Instagram, Snapchat, and like that. Um, I would I say social media. Yeah, I agree. It has a big influence on everyone. Thanks so much, Marissa. And now we're going to go to our partner. Hi, my name is Erin Coffey. I'm a senior visual and performing arts pre-physical therapy major here at Widener. I'm also president of Widener Dance Company, and I would like to invite you to our upcoming annual spring recital. Our first show is on Saturday, April 2nd at noon, which will feature a performance by the kids at the Boys and Girls Club of Chester. Our second show will be on Saturday, April 2nd at 7 p.m., which is our senior night. And finally, our third show on Sunday, April 3rd at noon, featuring our alumni. We hope to see you there. And we're back with Mr. Jack Schaefer, where we're talking about marketing. So one of the things I wanted to touch on today here... Right. Um, you have had many roles, as we've already previously discussed. We're going to get in a little bit more. Sure. But the first question I have is, while throughout your time here at Widener, you've filled many roles and helped grow the overall community service of the department. But besides you growing them, how have they contributed to the development of your leadership personally? 
I think anybody that has ever played youth sports would understand a little bit about the impact that volunteers have on what you're doing. Because mm -hmm. Those are not paid positions, and there are, there are people out there that love their kids, that love mm -hmm. their sport, experience in sport, no matter it's hockey, soccer, baseball, softball, whatever. And they're giving their time, and they're giving their knowledge, and they're giving their care, and they're giving their passion for their kids in the sport mm -hmm. so that the kids can, can play and, and, and grow in the sport and learn. And there are so many different things that you grow and learn when, when you're involved in sports. We can kind of circle back to that later, but to answer your question, that sort of an idea with community service still permeates what we do today as coaching staff, as administrators, and as people that are also um, taking our teams and reaching out to different parts of the community um, or having parts of a different community in um, to, to facilitate some activities and, and give back. And our, our, our staff, um, and this, this is where the example is set, really. Our staff, prior to, prior to us hitting COVID, were probably just touching about 4,000 hours a year Wow. Of community service amongst our student athletes. That's fantastic. It really is. It shows an incredible amount of dedication. It shows an incredible amount of compassion and, and concern and, um, and the ability to give yourself over to something that's bigger than you are. And that may be someone's experience. It may be, it may be that you are cleaning a park. It may be that you are reading to school children. It may be that we, we used to host a, a very large uh, Special Olympics event um, we would get over 450 Special Olympians in, in our facilities to participate during the day. And, and all of our student athletes, and this is the thing that, you, that, that really stands out, our student athletes would facilitate and run all of that. We entrusted them to put together all the operations and oversee the activities and provide for all of the competitors that were there. We had swimming, we had volleyball, we had basketball. How you guys do it? Oh, wow. We did it all. We did it all. And... And that sort of those sorts of interactions do a lot of things, that, as I've learned over over the years, for people. Other than just, it's not just simply giving of yourself. Those that give are also benefiting from this. And I, this is this is what I mean. I, you have a. Um, I think that as you as you endeavor through community service projects, you on a personal level are also gaining life skills. Um, yeah, definitely. The idea of compassion is there, of course. The idea of giving and your time and expertise is there, too. I think that, that any time that you're, you put yourself in a situation where you can provide a positive impact on others, whether it be through sport or some sort of activity or what have you, I think that that's incredibly important to your own personal growth, and, 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 and that's important. But at the same time, it's, it's an exchange, right? So while you, you are, you are um, one might be, Providing a service in a community service event, and, and others are benefiting from it. You yourself are also benefiting from it. So there's 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 a there's a broad way in that in the way that that interacts with people personally, mm -hmm. and as a group, even even more so, even more so. Uh, the the idea is to is to try to is try to build the experience of others through your own through your own time. Yeah, through you your can own. also become a role model in some of these kids' eyes. You can, yeah, you absolutely can. Um, and it's it's it's. You bring up a really neat point in, in that when we have our basketball players oversee the basketball competition for our Special Olympians, mm -hmm. well, those guys become rock stars. And they don't, and they might be refereeing and they might be keeping time, but the moments that they come out and they try to help the kids or teach them a skill or something like that, their, their status skyrockets, mm -hmm. right? Well, they're giving that kid confidence to do something because. They're helping them do that. You know, that's that's a pretty... That's, yeah, they can they, change someone's life doing that. They can change someone's life. They can just, you know, a, a smile for a second could last a lifetime on the inside. And, and I think that th those those sorts of things are, are very important, not just to children as well, but this is just, this is a great example where it's also... Well, while we're reaching out to others and providing them with something, I think that we are still we are growing as humans inside as, as, as we do that. And I think that th both of those things that are interacting are extremely important. No, they definitely are important. And it is great to see that you do so, so much of that and that you're so involved with that. Um, I also noticed on here that you were involved with the Big Brothers and Big Sisters Club. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, we were for a period of time um, taking uh, particular student athletes that had an interest in being Big Brothers and Big Sisters. And 
they would go out into the community. And this was early on in my career as, it, when I started as the athletic director. And we had a, we, had, we had some really good good pickup from that. Um, and so they were they were interacting with uh, with kids through the program. Um, I can't remember the timing of it. It might have been like once a month with projects and, and that sort of a thing. And um, yeah, that was uh, again. It's, it's it's something where people are giving of themselves and getting some you know and, and providing experiences for others and helping. It's, it was fantastic. No, that's definitely important. As someone who's grown up playing sports their whole life, and personally, myself speaking, uh, my dad was our coach. He, the coach, go. he volunteered all his time. He right. never asked for a dime. And I know that's changed him. He's told me about it several times. So I want to say thank you. I'm sure we all want to say thank you, and we all appreciate what you've done so far. It's, it's nice of you to say. There, there are many other thousands of others that, 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 do, that, that do that work, and it's, it, it's fun to see. Any Saturday you pass an athletic field, I think you see, whether it's soccer, mm-hmm. flag football, or what, baseball, softball, whatever. It's fantastic to see when you sort of recognize what's happening. Yeah, people volunteering their time. Yeah. Always important. Okay, so the next question I have for you. With one of your responsibilities as the director of athletics being growing the athletic department, how has the marketing been useful to you? Marketing is incredibly important because it exposes your brand and who you are, mm-hmm. and for, to put it as simply as I possibly can. And, and it's important that um, it's out there. It's a tool. It's a tool of recogni- recognition for, 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 for the public, for prospective students. And um, it, it, means, it means a lot, and we have to try to do as much as you can with it. From an athletic department standpoint, our, our marketing can come through our website. It can come through social media. It can come through um, our presence at games or at events or at a Special Olympics event or yeah. a volunteer event or what have you, or they're doing, they're doing work collecting recyclables at, at a Philadelphia Union game or something like that. And the brand is important because it, it, the brand is, is something that goes beyond the field and, it, and, and, and can entice others. To, you, know, you want people to look at the brand that you have, just like that sweatshirt you have on there, and say, what is that? What's that W stand for? And we, we, had, we changed our logos uh, about four years ago, and okay. we had – we t- took what we had had as a, what you might see in a, on a lot of logos here, in this Widener University, mm-hmm. sort of a basic font, and, and wanted to try to make it to, to create something that was a bit more recognizable and a varsity letter sort of standpoint. So we right. want one very unique W to be st- to represent who we are, right? So now you see, just like the one that's on your shirt there, it's a blocked varsity type of a W with, with a... The blue, you're wearing a blue W, royal blue W with a white and gold stripe. And those are our colors. And if you ever, what happens when you wear that, when you're able to wear that out, and it's just a shirt with a W on it, people want to know what that is. Where do you go to school? What is that? You know, that's, and that starts the conversation. That starts the conversation. And that's, and that's, and our lines have changed, and, and we've, we've made, made, made things a bit more basic, but a bit more punched it up a bit so that it was recognizable from a distance. And we thought that that was important. And some former logos that we had used had kind of lost that ability or never had that ability. But it was important for us that we want people to recognize the symbol, what it is, and people to ask the question if it, you know, of it. And I think it's, it's become pretty appealing. Yes, One thing definitely. that I've noticed here across campus, even in the last two years, is our, our school colors are more represented in different places differently than they ever have been. That might just be in paint. That might just be in, <laughs> yeah. in tile or whatever. But if you look at the Adirondack chairs that are out there now, that what, there are school colors. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at that Lysol right behind you, actually. We didn't. Oh, I, we did this That's independently. Yeah. That was, right? <laughs> That's through Widener, right? <laughs> That's through Widener. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's always important in, in, in however you do. And these game stories and stories of human interest and stories of – of um, athletic accomplishments or staff accomplishments, what have you, or featuring community service, you know, or what have you, uh, academics and that sort mm-hmm. of a thing. Associating those those quite important moments and times and people with your logo, I think they correspond quite well and, and translate very well for those that, that are interested. And, and they, the association becomes automatic. Yes, definitely. Um, the next question is, or second part to that one. Yeah. Is how does your education help you grow and market the athletics department? My education. Do you, so do you mind if I ask? Yeah. You no, you did, you did not go to Weiner. I did not. No, I did not. I do see on here that you had 
went to Harvard University Graduate School of Education, Management Development Program. I did. Very impressive. Thank you. So how, Thank you. And as I said, how does that help you grow and market the athletics department? I think, I think by gaining perspective from others in different ways will help you carve a path that's maybe unique for your you in a moment across a great long period of time or just across a very short period of time to make make a change and making that change is something that can um, enlighten others attract them to what you're looking for in your brand and market market your teams market your those teams accomplishments that sort of a thing it's 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 a uh, it's, it's extremely important and communicate mediums of communication are are constantly evolving TikTok. I have a 14 year old. So, <laughs> oh, so you know all about being it. Being well versed. Um, whether it's TikTok or it's Twitter, Instagram. Is Facebook yeah. even there anymore? I don't know. Uh, Instagram, MySpace. Do you remember that? Oh, that's, that was a, that that's was a test. That just was a about test. my time. That was a test. <laughs> well that was a test. But trying to find your way into those mediums, we are we are doing that with 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 as much as we possibly can to get to get some traction in, in, in places where people are looking and people are going to recognize who we are. Our teams have their own accounts in all of those. So they're publicizing, self-publicizing mm-hmm. and they're never doing it without the logos present, without the colors present and without them. You know, I mean, those things are all again, lead to, to an association that kind of brings you back to the university to. So I'll, with, with that aside, I, I take, I take a lot of cues from other people. I try to keep up with as much as I possibly can. That's, that's, um, uh, trending or trendy uh, as it is uh it's important to be able to catch people's attention with with who you are and what you do and i think student athletes and athletic departments have that ability and it's normally beyond the court beyond the field and i think that that's that sort of experience for people that are looking for an institution to go compete at and 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 study that's that can be a catch that can be a really important hook for for those that are looking into into colleges no, it's definitely important. And like you did touch earlier on the marketing um, on social media, you rarely ever see anything without a logo in it, right. without the colors, without a mascot or something for any kind of event. Exactly. Online. exactly. We're going to take a quick break and check in with my correspondent, Marissa, as she talks to Widener students about Widener athletics. What would encourage you to attend more games here at Widener? Well, I'm an athlete here at Widener, <laughs> so I mean, I personally attend a lot of games, but just again social media like getting it out there or maybe like saying like they get points for a certain club being there but it's fun I like going to them um I feel like if they were advertised better because I like never know when they're happening um and maybe I feel like a lot of the ones I do know about are usually on Friday nights and I go home a lot of the weekends so I'm not here for them I feel like for me I'm just really busy so I feel like knowing in advance I always see it on like Instagram and then I'm like oh I have plans so Probably just like posting about it beforehand. Yeah. Free stuff. <laughs> like swag, and, swag like, t-shirts. Yeah, probably. I like homecoming because we got t-shirts yeah, for homecoming. Fun. Yeah. If I knew about it more. Yeah. I feel like we need more like. I feel like everything's like through the Widener Events app. Maybe it was like more, more social. advertised. I guess. I didn't know about any of the football games mm-hmm. besides homecoming. Um, I think honestly, I just never, I end up not finding out when they are, and that's partially because I don't follow all the sports accounts, which I probably should. But even if you had one main, I probably Rick probably posts a lot about them as well, and maybe getting some of those posted on Widener's Instagram itself probably would help as well, and then reshares and stuff. Probably because I just don't end up knowing about when they are. Hmm. I feel like more advertisement. Like I know they post some stuff on Instagram, but there's never like anything big on campus about it. I guess it's like putting it out there more and sharing about it because not everyone knows about it. For all you viewers at home who are high school seniors, come check out Widener University Sports. We have some of the best programs in the state, amazing coaches, and all the games are free to watch, and the players are very welcoming and inviting. Come check us out. Okay, so next question I have for you is how has the Widener Athletics Department adjusted their marketing plan to reflect the busy lives of the target market? I would say that we are constantly making our best efforts to keep up with the trends and communication that we see out there. We've talked a little bit about social media and how in its presence and its its relevance to young people and, and I you know we try to we try to go through that way. But I'll tell you that um, our our brand and this is this is this is 
speaking globally, like what I mean by is the university brand precedes us as an athletic department in many different times that we recruit. And our people are, are going to recruit and talk to student, prospective students about coming to the university to participate in sport and, and study. Because those students, those prospective students already have an idea of the academic programming that we have here. And that's extremely important to them. And so you're meshing two things that are very important to, to, to two, two different bodies, right? The right. prospective student and, and the head coach. And so we, our best way that we market and, and become successful is by going to those people and meeting them and handshakes and face-to-face -face and meeting mom and dad and having, having good wholehearted conversations about where do you want to be in five years? What's your goal? Uh, what's your academic goal? The, now, the athletics, of course, is, is important, but I will tell you that, that it becomes secondary. It becomes secondary because the education that people are getting at a four-year institution is, is, it's their, is their launch pad for their life. And it just happens to be that we've cro we're, crossing, we're crossing identical interests, you know, and we have this, an individual that, that may want to participate in swimming. And we think that they're a fast swimmer and they would be great for our team. And they are looking at us, but maybe not as much for swimming as the fact that I want to, they're, they're thinking, I want to stay within, it, within the five counties around me. And I want to study engineering. And Widener has a very, very reputable, excellent engineering program. I can do both. Mm -hmm. And that is sometimes how they, they come here. Specific to, 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 to athletics, not often. Not often at all. Um, there, there's an overabundance of, of, of young men and women in our programs that, that the academic piece was extremely important in leading them here just by, the, by how good the Widener academic programs are in particular areas. And that's an assist for us. It's right. not the other way around. It's an assist for us. It's not the other way around. But the two coincide, and we, re we recognize that, and that is why these people are here for four years to... Yes, to participate, but we, we, they have an understanding that, that our, our staff want them to achieve their degree and move on. And that, is, that becomes the, you know, the heart of the whole experience and a big, you know, a big portion of, of what they are and who they are as people when they arrive here is what their goals are academically. Yeah, and going off what you said earlier about the meeting face-to-face, -face, I think that's important because it shows that the coaches and the staff care about you. It also reflects the small campus size that we have here with small teachers where uh, all the teachers know your name and they know all the students. Coaches, coaches build incredible deep relationships with, with students and mm -hmm. student athletes. I've seen that firsthand. Yeah. But, being but, here for four years. By, yeah, and, it's, and that's important. And, and that is, you could, I have coaches in my, in my offices that have been here for, let's just say, more than 20 years. And somebody who's played for them 18 years ago could walk in, 18 years older, with a wife and child, and gray yeah. hairs, and they know exactly who that yeah, person is. Yeah, they would recognize them as soon as in a minute, and they know their name off the top of their head. And, and that person maybe didn't play that much, but they recognize them. Mm -hmm. So those 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 uh, those relationships are deep rooted and very 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 special relationships for sure. Yes, they are. And again, touch not to keep bringing up the softball thing, but we do have alumni games every once in a while. So oh, yeah. when they do come back, it's, it's been years, and the coaches talk to them like they've seen them just last week. They know exactly what's going on with their lives, and the deep connections, I think, are very important. I agree with you. I agree with you. Some of that has to do with you know, what I was talking about earlier, the communicating with, with social media, and everybody kind of has the ability mm -hmm. to keep up with you and keep things fresh. But I've been around those softball alumni yeah. games, and those are great things. People jump out of cars screaming at each oh, other. Oh, they're so and, excited. And you can't wait. Kids hugs, and, you know, and it's— Yeah, they bring their kids, sometimes their grandkids— Great thing to say. It's, it's fantastic. Those sorts of things are just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So I do have one more final question for you today. Sure. Um, with so many years of leadership experience, what advice do you have to budding leaders at Widener? Take your time on this one because I know the viewers are looking forward to hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> I would – any advice is to, if <laughs> – if growing in your profession is what what you want to do, if you whatever it is, it doesn't have to be athletics. It wouldn't be where I'm answering mm -hmm. from. It could be anything. Okay, it could be as a doctor, as an engineer, as as a, as a veterinarian, uh, as a lawyer, what have you. You have, you know, there's there'll be something inside you that says, "This is what I want to do. This this is this idea is part of who I am." And you have to love what the grind is. 
You have mm-hmm. to love the work. And the only advice I would give is to, is to trans that, translate that love you have for what it is that you want to become into, into a reality by grinding away and working away and, and using all the tools you take from Widener education. And if you happen to be a student athlete from being a student athlete, and if you happen to be a student ambassador from being a student ambassador, if you happen to be a RA from being an RA, mm-hmm. and on and on and on, and take what you've learned here as a person at the university amongst all those hours that you've been interacting with people and, tr- and sorting yourself out to, to what it is that you want to do with your life, find the love in that and go as hard as you can at the goals. And, you know, that if you don't love what you're doing, you, you probably will not accomplish what it is you set out to do. And you have to love <laughs> the amount of work that you get, the pain it causes, <laughs> And understand when you are satisfied with the work that you've accomplished and understand and be absolutely, you know, pat yourself on the back and give yourself credit every time you have a little success along the way, because that, that recycles back into more work and doing well and, 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 and achieving. You just, you, if you don't love it, you will not achieve it. All of it. Good, bad, and the ugly, right? It's true. It's true. It's true. It's look, we all run into speed bumps along the way and, and things that delay your career or the, the things that delay where you want to be at that, at this particular time. And those are hard lessons to learn, but lessons that, that we all learn along the way that maybe it's not time. Maybe it, the work isn't there yet. Maybe I need to look at things a little bit different as you navigate through college. I think there's one thing that, that, that happens to so many people is they become very strategic about how they look at the world and how they look at what they're going to get, what they want to get out of, whatever they're studying and translating that into a career. And I think as they get, as they learn those strategies of navigation and understanding, loving the work and loving the final product and putting something out there that they are proud of and know that others are satisfied with their work there. I think that can perpetuate you for a very long time and take you to a very high place in whatever sort of business you're in or, or, you know, activity you want to get yourself involved with. It's, if you don't love it, you're not, you're not going to, not going to achieve it goes for sport it goes for work it goes for family it goes for relationships with your friends it's that that finding finding that core that core of what it is you love about things is is extremely important definitely so besides loving the what you're going to do what would you suggest that we do now like almost today to better ourselves in our future in sport and event management that's an interesting question i i um i would i i believe i would Sport and event management. I think the, the the more you can get out and and get around those events and get around people at those events and understand how they work and and find ways in into the tunnels, you know, as mm-hmm. to where all the operations happen, so you can learn as much as you can. That will help you move things. Now, everybody's got a different. Uh, everyone has a different um, area of expertise or or interest. Some of it might be operations, some of it might be technology, some of it might be, um, you know, um, social media and communications. It's get yourself into those situations so that you can set yourself up for, you know, success. Yeah, getting involved, definitely the experience is something that we all need, I think. Especially it's been a little tough with COVID right now, but we're making it work. It's true. It's true. You've got, you know, as a, as a, as a young, as not even as a young adult, as, as, as a middle-aged adult, I would tell you, you have to find ways to keep learning. And and that is that that also perpetuates your career and perpetuates your interest and it perpetuates the love that you have for what you do. Does all those things work work together? There's no doubt about it. Okay, great. Uh, any th- any final thoughts you want to add for our viewers? I really enjoyed being here today. This is a fun conversation. I hope uh, I hope uh, I hope you I hope that uh, we get to do it again. Soon. Great. Well, we appreciate you coming on, taking your time. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Thank you. This is Eric, and this has been the Widener Marketing Pride Podcast. Thank you, and see you next time. Thank you all for listening to Marketing Pride Podcast today, where we had on Mr. Jack Schaefer, the Director of Athletics and the NCAA Compliance Coordinator for Widener Athletics. Stay tuned for future episodes where we talk to other different people. Thank you. Yo, is this how they feel on TV shows all the time when you see those blue fruits? (laughs) Honestly, yeah, we should. That would be funny. (laughs) I might have blacked out until until whatever. I am trying. Oh, geeking out. I don't know what to say. You guys keep changing on me every time. We're going to take a short break and check in with my...
What's the word? Court. <laughs> this should be the easiest part of the podcast. Thanks for sticking in there. We're going to go back to what my correspondent, Marissa, and check in about... Wait. <laughs> Why are your students and wait? Thanks for sticking in. We're going to go... Coordinator and the... <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you so much, Marissa. And now we're going to go in... Wait. Welcome back to the Marketing Pride. <laughs> it's just mainly me cursing. 